Thank you, MC, for the nice introduction. So my name is Dr. Jabba. I'm uh, recently joined uh, University of Malaysia Sabah, but I'm currently doing my clinical work in uh, Hospital Queen Elizabeth II. Okay, so let me start my slide. All right. Uh, so, so the tagline uh, of my usual talk is uh, we need to synchronize further and we need to do it together. Okay. So I've been some disclaimer. This is a sponsored talk by Medtronic, and I've been giving the same talk on PAV Plus for about five times, including today. So starting from uh, training all the trainers in Malaysia, and then subsequently some uh, further PAV Plus uh, talk and training. So PAV Plus usually the training designed for two days, but I'm given only thirty minutes. Okay. So this talk meant for educational purposes and clinicians should apply the knowledge from this talk with own due diligence and responsibility. So this is my ICU. Now we just uh, rebrand the design. It looks like a police station. So we have 14 ICU beds in Queen 2. Uh, and we have currently 15 ventilators of Metronic Puritan Bennett 980. We just uh, changed from PB840, which is 20 years old on the 20th anniversary. So we changed all to B980. So all equipped with PAV plus mode and uh, we are, me and the MOs are regularly, regularly using it as a culture and uh, regularly using it. So because of this talk, it's supposed to take about uh, two days and, and I'm cramped it into 30 minutes and I hope you guys can follow me because I'm going to go quite fast. Don't worry, this, this talk is being recorded and you can follow and don't forget to like and subscribe my YouTube channel. I will upload in my YouTube channel after this. You can take picture this 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 slide uh, if you want to take. So don't take picture of other slides. The other slides is just focus. Okay. So later I will uh, I'm recording now, then I upload. Okay. Alright. So let's go first uh, to what is PAV plus. PAV plus is a proportional proportional assist ventilation plus. Plus is just additional branding because I'm sure you guys will ask what is plus there so it's just to make it cantik all right so we go to the ventilator tag I think just now the previous speaker have uh, shined some light on you regarding the ventilator tag so these are the ventilator tag that every every slide if reference is very uh, interesting I'm providing a QR code that you can scan and download okay so this paper uh, by Robert Chapman from Cleveland Clinic, the uh, taxonomy, because you see a lot of different terms, a lot of different meaning, and different people use different terms. So they come up with a ventilator tag, uh, standardized term terminology for ventilator modes. Okay, so PAV plus is a type of ventilator mode which proportionally assisting patient in alveolar ventilation according to patient's effort. Okay, so PAV plus according to the current ventilator taxonomy as of 2022, which is step one, we want to know whether it's uh, pressure or volume control, PC, and then breath sequence is continuous spontaneous ventilation, and then the targeting sequence scheme is servo. Servo not doesn't mean the ventilator servo. Servo means it's inspiratory pressure. The pressure they're giving by the ventilator is proportional to the patient inspiratory effort. Okay, so it's proportional. So the ventilator tag is PC CSVR. During my time, I didn't need to know all this, but in the future, maybe you, you guys escape. Lah. Maybe another five years, the master student need to know lah, this ventilator tag. So it's coming soon to your exam. So PC CSVR. Okay, so like the dual pop, dual, dual pad before, it was a PC IMV. Uh, and then for ASV, it's PC IMV OI OI. The, 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 the last letter too, this how they achieve the target. Okay. Okay, first, how does it work? So, if you want to know how does it work, you need to know the mechanics of mechanical ventilation first. Alright? Uh, Dr. Aliza has talked about three graphs to rule them all. And of course, being an anesthesiologist and, and all of you, we all like equation, graph, eh, loops or whatever. So, I have one equation of motion which rule them all, which will rule all the ventilator modes. Everything we do with ventilator will, 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 will relate to this. Okay, so this is the equation that will rule them all. So I'm going to explain this equation. So hopefully you can follow me. If you cannot follow me, you can go to my YouTube channel and go through again. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Okay. So 
Firstly, to expand or ventilate the lung, you need to overcome two types of load. You need to, two types of load need to be overcome to expand the lung. First is the resistive load. So as the air going into the ETT, it will encounter the resistive resistance. Okay. From the airway, from the artificial airway, natural airway. Okay. And then uh, resistive load comprise of the airway resistance itself and also the flow of air. The flow of air itself is a resistance. Huh? If you are taking MEDEX or MASTER, the flow, uh, the uh, laminar flow, turbulence flow, then you need to know uh, beyond of this topic. Lah. So that's, that's how it goes. Lah. So the higher the air flow, the more resistance. Okay. Second load is you need to overcome is elastic load. So elastic load comprises of elastance times volume of the lung being expanded. So as you can imagine, if you want to uh, ventilate me as a small person with one liter of tidal volume, of course, it will damage my lung because the elastic load will be very big. And up to a certain point, you cannot, the load become bigger and bigger. It's very hard to expand further. So these two loads, you need to overcome to expand the lung. All right. So elastic load plus resistive load need to be overcome by the other side of the equation. So this is the other side equation is the total pressure. P van means the pressure exerted by the ventilator. P mass is by the patient, which is muscle. This is standard term globally everyone use. Okay. So total pressure done by the patient and the ventilator to overcome both elastic and resistive load is P mass plus P van. Okay, equals to elastic load plus resistive load. So P mass, which is by the patient, and P van by the ventilator. So when you just intubate the patient, of course, will be, they will be paralyzed and they will have no spontaneous breathing. So all of the load, both resistive and elastic load, will be 100% by the B van. Okay. So as patient wake up, as the residual paralysis uh, abolish and the sedation weaning off, there is some work being done by the patient. So P must starts to increase. Okay. So they will be along the way will be shifting between patient and ventilator. Some patient, sometimes patient do the work, sometimes patient, ventilator do 100% of the work. But the, as you go on, you want to reduce the P van and more of the work by, done by the patient eventually. All of the work done by the patient, which is extubation or uh, TPs. Huh? All right. So the relationship between PVAN and PMAS with regard to mode, there are in the, all the mode, 200 plus mode in the world can be divided and classified into three modes. Again, not during my exam, maybe your master exam in five years' time will be there. Like this is a new concept. So because of there is a shifting between patient and ventilator, they divided the three, all the modes in the world classified into three types uh, based on the shifting between patient and ventilator work. Okay. So this is the graph, right? One equation, one graph. Okay. More is coming. Okay. So the first one, as patient demand increase, as P must increase, huh? not Elon Musk, huh? P must increase from zero to higher demand. This is patient demand, P must. All right. Patient demand can increase due to worsening loads like uh, worsening pneumonia or extra pulmonary causes like acidosis, anxiety, delirium. All right. One mode, as the patient muscle P must increase, there will be reduction in pressure delivered by the P van, by the ventilator. So you can see the uh, arrow, right? It's coming down. Okay. The more the patient, uh, the, the more the patient take the breath, P mass, yeah. Let me change the pointer. Okay, the more the P mass works, the P van become lower, turun, because you want to equate with the uh, motion, equation to balance on the other side. Okay, the other type of ventilator, uh, the more the demand increases. Okay, whatever the the patient demand uh, increase, the pressure delivered by the ventilator will be the same. This is PCCMV, PCCSVS, pressure support, pressure control, and uh, ASV, dual path, and so on. Okay, because uh, whatever patient do, it will be delivered same, sama saja. Tapi dia tak, at least dia tak menurun lah. Okay, alright. And the other type is uh, the more patient demand increase, the the more proportionally pressure P van will be delivered to the patient. 
So it is proportional. The more you want, the more you get. This is true for money, but we don't have that. Okay. The more we want money, but we don't get money. Lah. But in this PAV plus, the more patient wants breathing, the more support that the patient, the, the, the ventilator will give. So there is only there are only two modes in the world which have PC CSVR, which is this third classification mode, which is PAV and also NAVA. Okay. However, NAVA, you need to put a esophageal uh, catheter and then they want to they, they are detecting the electrical signal of the diaphragm. Okay. All right. So to use PAV plus, you need to have a very good synchrony between the two brains, which is our brain, which we set the ventilator, and also the patient brain. Not only that, patient brain must be uh, good. Uh, the connection between brain, also the muscle, and the muscle also need to be good. So meaning to say your chronic patient, your uh, nerve injury and all, you, you cannot use PAV plus. There are some contraindications. I will talk about it later. All right. So essentially, it means that PAV is a proportional mode. The patient drives the ventilator, not physician drive the ventilator. That's why uh, this mode also actually quite safe for the lung because uh, whatever patient want, uh, that's what they get. Okay. I will explain about it later. All right. So how does the proportional assist work? So these are the equation. So in order to proportionally support the patient, the ventilator must know the loads the patient is facing all the time. Okay. So P van, the formula is P van, PAV plus equals to percentage of support times elastance load, percentage of support receive load. So what the ventilator do, ventilator have to measure almost semi-continuously the elastic load and the resistive load. And then we, as a physician, we set how many percentage of those load that we want to support. Okay. So these are the uh, ventilator setting. So percentage support will be set by the clinician. Okay. And ventilator need to be able to measure both loads accurately. So the elastin and resistant part will be measured by the ventilator every four to eight breaths. Every four to eight breaths, they can measure, they can measure again and measure again. And the other part of the equation, volume and flow being measured every half a breath. So every, every half a breath, they can detect. So every breath, they can detect the increase in flow and airflow and also volume. Okay, so this, this changes throughout. You see, uh, when patient wake up, they're becoming very more vigorous, right? So they, they, they want more. So the volume and also the flow increase. So the ventilator detected, oh, the elastic load and resistance load increased by this much. We already set the percentage support 70%. So we will support this load this much. That what, what we want. Okay. Every four to eight breaths, they will measure the compliance and also the resistance of the airway. So every breath, breath besar, breath kecil, breath besar, breath kecil, they can follow patient. Patient tidur, small breathing, they pun akan bagi sikit. They tak bagi banyak. So they, they akan sentiasa ikut the diaphragm. They can uh, train the diaphragm. They tak and doesn't cause over assistance okay so how do the ventilator measure elastic load so every 48 breaths ventilator will do an inspiratory hole or occlusion for 300 milliseconds why 300 milliseconds because in this study they show if spontaneously breathing patient you hold the breath are you scared or not you scared patient will be fighting right that's why dr aliza cakap tadi kena paralyze hold the breath kan want to see the plateau pressure remember or not or Forgot already, very, very difficult. Okay. So, but in spontaneous liberty patient, you can actually hold the breath. So they studied the neural effect and also respond by the patient. If you give more than 300 milliseconds hold, hold breath holding, the patient will start to react negatively to the holding breath. So it means when they do 300 milliseconds, there's nothing. No, it's like patient doesn't even realize it. Okay. So that's why they use 300 millisecond hold or occlusion. This is the gap that you can see. So when there is no flow at that time, so they can measure the, uh, that's the uh, plateau pressure. So this is the airway pressure during an inspiratory occlusion, passive elastic recall pressure, plateau pressure, yeah, then the plateau pressure will be minus PIP and then divided by VT. Then you can get that elastance and elastance is one over, compliance is one over elastance. So by using this method, they measure, they hold the breath, they take the plateau pressure minus the PIP, tidal volume divided by PIP, you get the compliance. Okay, so this is how the machine measures the elastic load or compliance. Elast compliance is one over elast elastin, right? Medex, huh? Medex, jangan salah pula. 
Master lah. Many of you master also. Jangan lupa, jangan salah. Okay. Alright. So, 300 milliseconds was chosen because of based on study, behavioral response to airway occlusion have a latency around 300 milliseconds. So, it, it, it's as if they don't realize it. So, how do they measure the resistive load? So, after the occlusion, okay, the airway pressure will decay and will be deducted by expected exponential reduction by alveolar pressure, P plus. So, you can see there is two graphs. So, the PALV is the expected uh, alveolar pressure based on the study by UNES and all. And the green color is the actual pressure decay after whole op occlusion. Okay, so they measure at the peak aspiratory flow. So they minus. So PALV, uh, the, the expected alveolar pressure minus the airway pressure and divided by the flow, which is the peak aspiratory flow, then you can get the resistance. So this is the resistance, total resistance, which is the, the, the difference of the pressure divided by the peak aspiratory flow. So you get resistance. It's an uh, Ohm's law. Uh, and I suka equation kan. Uh, so, this is another application of the equation uh, to measure resistance. Alright? Right. Okay. So, how do the... how Then, at the same time, the measure... Uh, ventilator measure both load. So, with one short operation maneuver, the ventilator able to measure both E and R without triggering behavioral response. And PLV plus measure flow, volume and pressure every 5 milliseconds to adjust the event support according to percent support chosen. So, the other side of the equation, the flow and also volume will be measured every 5 milliseconds. And every, the elastin also resistance will be measured every 4 to 8 breaths. Okay. So, as you can see here, when the machine uh, measure the compliance, they will be holding of breath. So, you can see in the ventilator, it will be a white color holding, breath holding in the PAV plus. Okay. So, what we set is, we set the appropriate pressure support and we adjust the PEEP and uh, we adjust the FIO2. Very easy, right? For your two, pressure support and P. So it's very simple. And then uh, don't be mistaken. Uh, if you set percentage support of 70%, it doesn't mean 70% uh, of the... Uh, we support 70% of what the patient uh, patients work. We support 70% of the load, resistive load and, uh, and also elastic load. So when, when we talk about proportionality between... P, uh, airway pressure power and uh, muscle P mass as a function of percentage of support. If the patient, if you put a uh, ventilator pressure of, sorry, percentage of support of 50%, then the machine measure the total pressure required is 2 cm water. This is total means is a, the total load. 2 is total load. Okay. 2 is total load of the elastin and resistance. So the machine will deliver 50% of the support. So they will give PAW1. Okay, so in the beginning, patient will have more mass, but over time, patient akan adjust their punya muscle power according to the uh, 50%. Lah. So whatever is not being given by the ventilator. Okay, so they, they check the total elastin the load dulu. Bukan they check whatever is the patient is doing work. They check whatever the load first. How they do that? By all the, the, the uh, maneuver that I have told before. Lah. So if you set 70, if you actually, if you set 80%, for example, if the total load is 5 cm water, machine will support 80% of the total load, which is 4. So, four, 5 minus 4 is 1. So, if you see 1 to 4 is actually, the, the ventilator is giving around 4 times of what the patient's effort. Okay? So, we are actually percentage support, not support what the patient do. We support what the loads are. So, you must think of loads. Okay, all right. So if you go up until 100% support, it will give about 20 times. Okay, if patient require this much, that means patient is not ready for PAV plus. Huh? Okay, all right. So it's proportional. The more you want, the more you get. Okay, so this is the three types of modes. So how do you apply PAV plus in the ICU? Okay, so in, in many parts of the world, so they, or, we, uh, they already... Uh, shape the goal of mechanical ventilation and have been adopted to in many countries uh, into three uh, goals of mechanical ventilation. So as you can see, another graph for you. So this graph indicates the y-axis percentage of under three breaths, 100%. And then the, the, the y-graph is high resistive load on the left side and low resistive load on the, on the 
on the right side. Okay, so when the patient just intubated having severe pneumonia and uh, we are uh, actually the goal is safety, right? We talk, we hear about from Dr. Chia regarding the uh, lung injuries, okay, the diabetic pressure and so on. So the first goal is safety. Tadi volume less than 6 mil per kilo, diabetic pressure less than 50, plateau pressure less than 30, low auto pit, low mechanical power. Okay, so this is during the full mandatory breath. Next, as the disease improvement occurs, improvement of disease process, we go to the goal which is comfort, which is winning and optimize synchrony. And Dr. Uh, Wan Rahiza, uh, Prof. Wan Rahiza already showed, right? You can reduce the SIMV rate, you can change to PSV and so on, okay? So many people, uh, SIMV rate from 20 become 18, 16, 14, 12. Who, who does this? Everyone, right? Semua orang buat macam ni? Don't know. Okay. All right. So as we go on the improvement of disease process, there will be more and more fully spontaneous breathing. Okay. So then at this time around, usually we start pressure support ventilation, SBT, or many people, some people like to reduce their SIMV rate until 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay. Then the last goal is liberation, where we want to optimize further the synchrony, synchronize further together. And we want to do SBT and aspiration. Okay. So where does the PAV plus come into place? Okay. What I practice in my ICU is that instead of reduce as soon as patient starts to have breathing, spontaneous breathing, we don't cut down the rate. Huh? We straight away change to PAV plus as early as possible. As soon as the patient have good regular spontaneous breathing and the oxygenation and the compliance have improved. Usually I calculated the compliance. If they have compliance more than 20, you can calculate by uh, SIMV whole pressure. You find the plateau pressure minus speed divided by the tidal volume that generated, then you get the, uh, roughly about the compliance that they have. So if the compliance has improved to more than 20, as recommended by the manufacturer, so we can start using PAV plus very early in the patient's journey towards disease improvement. This is very important because of the many benefit that I will show you later. All right, so when to switch to PAV plus mode? As soon as oxygenation improving, compliance improving, recommended more than 20 mils per centimeter water. How you wanna uh, uh, measure during SIMV or BC or BC? You measure the driving pressure divided by tidal volume generated. Sorry, terbalik. Tidal volume divided by driving pressure. Driving pressure divided by tidal volume is elastance. Tidal volume divided by driving pressure is compliance. So one over compliance, terbalik lah. All right, so at this point of time, sedation will be stopped, patient started to waking up. Now patient at the higher risk, highest risk of ventilator desynchrony. This is the best time to change the AV plus mode, which is early. All right, we start with 70% support and may follow clinical assessment to further reduce the patient's support. Okay, so enter the AV tube and show the safety parameters and then choose the initial patient support. Okay, you can play around with a simulator. This is simulator uh, of the PB980. You can this uh, sim.oraintractive.com. Okay, you can take picture lah. Then you can play around SIMV, IE. Kan tadi ada the doctor was telling about if you set like this, like this, then tadi volume like this. I mean the expiry time like this. Uh, then you agak agak oh the expiry time memang lah might be minus this kan. So you can play around with the ventilator. Okay, it's online uh, uptime all the time lah. You can see. All right. So uh, this is the algorithm that suggested the suggested. Uh, when you are using the PAV plus. So you want to switch early to AV plus and you want to ensure that the compliance is more than 20 mils per centimeter water and patient have good oxygenation and you think the whatever which caused the intubation has already almost sort of reversing. Okay. All right. So this is from the Tobin mechanical ventilation uh, textbook. So initial setting is 70% assist, proportional assist. And you want, to, you want to look at the respiratory rate and tidal volume. So if the RR is very high, tidal volume is low, generated low, then you increase PIP 2 to 3. Then you observe 5 to 10 minutes. Then if there is no distress, RR is normal, okay, then you can cut down the acid percentage assist every 2 hours. I actually do very fast. Lah. Half an hour, 1 hour, cut down 70 to 60 to 50 to 40, okay? And then no respiratory distress. No distress at, in, in, in this Tobin textbook, they say, Reduce until percentage support of 10 to 20% and I consider extubation. In my practice, I usually up to 40 or 30%, I already extubate the patient. Okay, there's already very minimum. Okay. 
So this is no distress. And then so in, in, in the test group, distress defined as a heart rate more than 120% from recent baseline, SBP very high, RR like this, mark use of extreme muscle, and other clinical sign. Or if there is no clinical sign, RSBI, uh, frequency uh, rate, respiratory rate divided by tidal volume is more than 105. Okay, so, so if the distress occur, this part, you need to increase PIP in step by guided by compliance. Okay, so the most common distress at this part, at this point, is delayed triggering secondary to hypodynamic dynamic hyperinflation. So you need to increase the PIP if there is dynamic hyperinflation. Compliance should increase as PIP is increased. Okay, so dynamic hyperinflation already explained by the previous speaker. So when you have dynamic hyperinflation, this is our normal uh, breathing. Inspiration, plateau pressure negative five, then zero from the uh, atmosphere, negative five inside, then the air comes in. So how about auto PIP? So when you have auto PIP, patient need to generate plateau pressure even higher, negative 13. Okay, so the, the there will be uh, air trapping at the end of expiration, which is plus 10 in the alveolar. All right, so patient need to uh, exit negative 13 to make sure from 10 go to down to zero and go down to negative. Then only air can come in because of gradient of the pressure, right? Baru air boleh masuk. So how to you resolve this? Of course, we give external PIP to treat internal PIP. All right, so we give external PIP of 10. Okay, then we will match the, uh, this is like a stenting, it will match the internal PIP, uh, I mean alveolar pressure. And then patient just need to breathe in negative three of uh, negative uh, uh, the intrapleural pressure negative three. Then on already the air flow can come in. Okay, instead of from zero to negative three because you already give ten at the end of the inspiration, inside becomes seven plus seven. Air flow can comes in already, so the flow will be maintained. Okay, so as you can see here from this study. If there is uh if PIP zero in, in this is in intrinsic PIP patient, if PIP zero, uh the, the, the effort like this, if PIP 10, the there will be decrease in past excursion. Listen, patient need to breathe in very hard. This is esophageal pressure. Okay. So then evaluation, you want to you want to increase the PIP and observe for CPF improvement and PIP intrinsic reducing. All right. So net low compliance, of course, this is like an incremental PIP that Dr. Chia have shown. So when you want to, when you find the patient is having distress, you want to increase the PIP, and then you want to see, uh, you want to increase PIP incrementally and observe so CPF improvement and watch for clinical distance improve. The good thing I like about PAV Plus because you can see the CPF on top, they calculate compliance all the time, resistant all the time, also intrinsic PIP all the time. So you can just see very easy. You don't need to calculate color calculator. Kalau in SIMV, I calculate using calculator, check semua berapa kan. But this one, they, they, they make it like that on top. Alright. Alright, so important message is that proper PIP titration, the effectiveness of wave plus may be decreased. Uh, five minutes. Huh? Alright, so if despite increasing PIP, high ventilatory demands, peak, PA, peak airway pressure more than 35, dynamic pressure more than 14, patient having clinically trouble breathing, compliance not good, so that means patient is not ready yet for PAV plus. If patient still having distress, if you're, uh, even if you support them at 70 to 80%. Okay, so uh, I will show the video later of how I set it, set it up. So next is, uh, uh, last. this is last section, role of AV plus, evidence-based. So the main role of AV plus, I reiterate, is a smart and safe early warning mode. Earlier and safer change to spontaneous mode, patient and ventilator interaction more optimum, greater respiratory muscle deficiency, improved patient ventilator synchrony, neuromuscular coupling, gases exchange, ventilator synchrony will lead to poor outcome. And when you provide a good assistance unloading of respiratory muscle, it will, because it follow PMAS level, the safety of the patient is preserved. Okay, then next is diaphragm and respiratory muscle protection. So when patient demand increase, PAV plus support proportionally higher P, P vent, tidal volume increase, the reflex will inhibit the biological feedback mechanism, the tidal volume will reduce, down regulate respiratory drive, patient neuro respiratory drive reduce, and PAV plus reduce proportionally. So when the patient reduce, then PAV plus also equal reduce juga. Okay, so diaphragm stimulated again and optimally used, and then tidal volume normalized. So naik balik, so they train balik, they equal, they follow. Okay, so when uh, for any reason the compliance reduce, uh, the effort reduce, load increase, then the PAV plus I can follow and give accordingly. Okay, so compliance reduce, respiratory rise, respiratory rate increase, 
and then PV plant will support professionally higher PVM. So you do not have to worry at any time patient will be coming worse, they will support accordingly. Lah. Okay, so this will avoid upper inflation and preserve the airframe function. So in, when you use PSV, patient demand increase, PSV provide constant pressure, tidal volume increase, the reflex inhibit the expansion mechanism, it downregulate the respiratory drive, patient neuro respiratory drive reduce. PSV still provide the same pressure regardless of the, uh, the effort already reduced. So when the effort is actually low, but you still keep giving the same pressure support, it will over assist. As if kita terlampau tolong lah kan. Bila terlampau tolong, we, we will help too much and then diaphragm will not be activated or stimulated or used much. So they will lead to diaphragm atrophy. Diaphragm less stimulated, less contracted, over assisted by the same PS although the drive already reduced. Tidal volume stacking and over assisted pressure support. And at any point of time, if compliance reduce, extra pulmonary respiratory drive increase, PSV still provide the same constant pressure. So it does not follow whatever the patient wants. So this can lead to hyperinflation, risk of diaphragm atrophy, cyclone desynchrony, and failed trigger desynchrony. So uh, PSV will shift up P mass VT relationship since supported pressure is constant regardless of the effort. As patient effort reduces due to refractory reflex, even a minimal effort will trigger a minimal tidal volume. So this is over assistant will lead to diaphragm atrophy, giving false assurance clinician that patient is self breathing. Okay. So padahal it's a genetic sikit je terus pressure support naik kan so this is the 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 problem lah so rapid issue atrophy in mechanically ventilated humans uh, can lead to uh, diaphragm atrophy muscle atrophy so based on study it can lead to earlier exhibition than PSV so at the manual PSV think of it as a smarter winning mode improve patient ventilator interaction provide high level assistance okay so it can uh, it prevent the mismatch respiratory flow demand lah alright Okay, so PSV plan also reduces major asynchrony based on study compared to PSV. And also it improves sleep in the ICU because it follows whatever the patient. So when patient sleeping, kurang respiratory drive, it also kurangkan the support to the patient. Alright, so conclusion, PSV plus should be carefully applied in patient with significant respiratory circuit leak because it unable to calculate elastin and resistance correctly. Alright, okay. So very poor compliance, less than 20 Sorry, 20 ml per centimeter water. Salah sikit itu. Okay, inefficient drive, oversaturated recovering from neuromuscular block, neuromuscular paralysis. Because the, the mode is patient drive the ventilator. Okay, the driver unfit to drive, then you cannot let them drive lah. Okay, so chronic critically ill patient, difficult to win patient. Okay, neuromuscular disturbance to brain respiratory muscle pathway because PAV plus require good coordination between patient's brain demand and neuromuscular transmission. Ventilator assume heavy pressure changes to lead to instant reaction from neuromuscular pathway. Right? So, a uh, 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 common misconception is that PAV plus is used as a last ditch mode, last savior mode. It's not a savior mode. It's an early winning mode. Okay? So, don't use all your very chronic patients and so on. Okay? So, CA patient, COD patient you can use or any condition with significant air trapping provided you give the correct uh, excellency PIP. Okay, so based on the meta-analysis and trial circulation analysis in year 2020 by uh, OEM, PV is associated with higher rate of winning success, a lower reintubation rate, and a shorter mechanical ventilation duration. And from this latest study, only recently in April, two months ago, by Campolis, Systematic Review and Mechanical Ventilation Adult. So this is the, the, the paper if you want. Right, so the NAVA versus PSV and PAV plus versus PSV in this, in this paper, ASV versus PSV, smart care PS versus PSV. So in NAVA versus PSV, it's significantly lower risk for in-hospital and ICU deaths, post lower requirement for post extubation NIV. And in PAV plus, the higher winning rate compared to PSV, lower mechanical ventilation duration, shorter ICU length of stay. So this is for NAVA and PSV, we share the same concept, okay? So uh, the other two, no significant difference to PSV in all measurable outcome. So as a conclusion, safe early winning mode, PSV plus, the most important is, is improved winning success. This is proven by these two meta-analysis. It's an earlier and safer change of spontaneous mode. It provides diaphragm and respiratory muscle protection huh? because it follows whatever the patient wants. When the, when the demand reduces, it reduces. When the demand increases, it increases. Okay? Think of it as a smarter winning mode. PSV plus reduces major asynchrony. Uh, PAV plus also improves sleep in the ICU and now we know it's very important to uh, maintain sleep in the ICU and it leads to earlier extubation than PSV. So my further research project with uh, Monash University engineer is that we want to make uh, 
a prediction continuous ventilator waveform data acquisition device that will enable the synchrony prediction, near term compliance prediction, and uh, I can I want to call for collaboration lah from HUKM. All right. So PAV plus is a simple mode. FIO2, quantity assist, and PIP. Very easy. Thank you. Synchronize for the together. Okay. Yes. Actually, I had not seen your tu tadi video tu. Boleh ke tidak? Okay, uh, so firstly, uh, you want to look at the uh, height. Okay, so they will measure the uh, either body weight according to the Arma Dryer punya formula. Okay, and then you change to the spontaneous mode and PAV plus. So as you can see there, so this is the CPAF, this is the CPAF. This is the R path, which is the resistant, I told you. And then the PIP intrinsic, intrinsic PIP. Okay, so these are the two continuously will be displayed. Okay. All right. So remember, I increased the PIP, right? Just now the compliance is 38. Now I increase PIP to 10. I just changed the patient to, to uh, PAD plus. Huh? So the CPAF increased to 40. Uh, this is recently uh, on Monday, this patient. Okay, so the R path is 18 and intrinsic is 1.92. Uh, okay, so I increase the PIP. This is like want to find the optimal PIP, incremental PIP. Okay, increase, increase, increase. You see the compliance. So just now the chair share show for uh, paralyzed patient, right? And then the remote, this is continuous mode. Okay, so now CPAF is does not increase further, yeah? Okay, so I increase the PIP to 12. And then I increase for data 14 after this. So as you can see, if you can see the there is white color uh breast holding, that is when they measure the uh compliance. Ah, that's that's the white color where they holding hold the breast. Okay, so they measure the compliance and reduce them at that time. So uh, the PIP 14, actually, in fact, uh, the compliance came down from 40 to 38. So it means it's at the upper part of the compliance curve. Huh? So it's not optimum. The, the more increase in pressure, uh, it will go into PIP, it will push the compliance at that part. Okay, so this is, you change the uh, ETT type or tracky type. Then you check the tube ID, internal diameter, and then you click confirm. Okay, so this is in another patient. This is in a COAD patient. So he had an A-trapping, bronchospasm. He's still having bronchospasm, but a good spontaneous breathing. So I already changed to AV plus. You can see the compliance is quite good. 57, 70. Okay, our path is 15. Just now it's about 18, 19. So above 20 is very severe bronchospasm. So the intrinsic peak now, they are calculating. About 2.6, uh, 2.4, more than 2. Lah. So first, I reduce the percentage support first because the tidal volume is very high. If tidal volume is normal, when you just change to PAV+, plus, tidal volume is normally can be very high. Sometimes you want to wait first until it's normalized. Okay. So I like to see the flow. So I change the layout to flow. So as you can see here, the compliance is 70. Peak, intrinsic peak is 2.6, right? So now I increase further the pressure support, then I increase the peak. So if patient has dynamic hyperinflation and you increase the peak, you need to see increase in compliance and reduction of intrinsic peak. Okay, so I increase the PIP to 7 and then the compliance will subsequently increase. Huh? So compliance uh, increase to 81, uh, in recipe we still the same. So it's starting to come down less than 2, the intrinsic PIP. So it already come down to 1.7, so this is uh, COAD, like a COAD patient. So they have, they have some auto PIP. Huh? So next I increase to PIP to 8. And then I want to see, uh, is there any further increase in compliance? Huh? Mm. 
So now the compliance is increasing uh, 83 and the intensity peak is uh, consistently below 2. Okay. Okay, so now I detect there is some uh, early cycling. There is some bulge, bulge at the beginning of respiratory phase. So I reduce the distance to 5. So to make respiratory cycle uh, prolong, more prolonged. So now, okay. All right, that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abdul Jabbar. We have ended our constructive and comprehensive lecture delivered by all our esteemed speakers. Now we are going to proceed with our hands on and uh, case based discussion. All participants have been divided into five groups. Each group will go to their destination station. Station A, 